Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video, and today I want to have a little discussion about knife laws. This, my friends, is the Manly Companion. This is a good knife, highly useful knife. As you can see, it's a slip joint knife, and, and I like this knife. Uh, but something has happened recently that, that almost seems to indicate that maybe this is the only kind of knife we're going to be able to have in Canada. And I don't know about you, but that's a little bit more than frustrating to me. So I want to have a bit of a discussion with you. This discussion primarily um, is going to circulate around Customs Notice 18-01, okay, and that's the date of the notification that it came out. It comes from Ottawa on January 5th, 2018, okay. And so, well, I like this knife, guys. Uh, I also like this knife, and I also like this knife, and, uh, you know, this knife, and lots of others. And, and so, the, considering the prospect that this knife or maybe this one would be the only knife that is going to be available to me in Canada is extremely troubling. And I wanted to, to talk a little bit about kind of what's going on, just to raise some awareness about this, to let you know if you are in Canada that there are some actions that maybe you can take. Uh, and to kind of share my concerns about this and some of the, and, he, and even talk a little bit about the inconsistency of this situation. Okay, so uh, let me start off by simply, you know, telling you what this particular change means. We will also take a look at the Criminal Code of Canada about what's legal and illegal here as it stands right now. Okay. Uh, by the way, I was being a little overboard with this knife. You know, this is another knife that would still be legal under, you know, the changes that they're making, as is this one. So it's not that we can't have any nice knives. It's just that they are really wanting to restrict this. So, uh, or there, that there seems to be a, you know, a mindset of, you know, we ought to restrict this. Somehow not folding knives are, are dangerous and, and we ought to be concerned. Okay, so. Uh, first off, let me read you the sort of the highlights of the the notice that went out. And it says here that in accordance with subsection 84-1 of the Criminal Code and the CITTs, that's Canadian International Trade Tribunal's recent decision in Tila Plant, the CBSA resolves that centrifugal knives will be classified as prohibited weapons if the following conditions are met. Now I'll put this on screen so you can read along with me. Here it is. A knife has a blade that opens by centrifugal force when the blade is released from the handle into the fully ejected and locked position with a simple and brisk outward flick of the wrist. Okay, that was in there before and essentially that meant a knife that you could whip open that didn't have a strong enough detent was going to be considered a prohibited weapon. Uh, now, even that is a bit of a uh, reinterpretation. The laws about gravity knives were initially directed at balisongs, and they've just kind of progressively, um, <clears throat> you know, progressively moved the, the finish line on these guys. Uh, but that and is important because he goes on to part B, because it goes on in part B, I should say, to say it includes, now listen to this carefully, knives that require some preliminary or simultaneous minimal manipulation of either a flipper or other non-edged part of the blade, okay? So, essentially, they're now saying that, you know, if I can flick this knife open with a bit of a wrist flick, then whatever portion of the blade I have to touch to achieve that doesn't matter, okay? It's not about the fact that I can uh, whip it open with my wrist. And here's a knife, really strong detent. This would get through no problem. This would absolutely get through customs without an issue. Um, but the Zero 0200 had a flipper, this has a flipper, and that's where this is primarily directed. But they even, and initially they had changed the wording to kind of say flippers uh, that were assisted or that had a really light detent could be problematic. Now they've gone on to even say any part of the blade that's that's not sharpened. So that would include a thumb stud, that would include a spider hole, that would include a front flipper, whatever else, uh, any part of the blade that you can now manipulate to get that knife open. Okay, so very problematic as far as, uh, or potentially, okay, very problematic. Now, by the way, let me be very clear. This is knives that you're bringing across the border, okay? So, uh, here's, you know, here's a knife that 
that uh, would potentially meet this criteria because man, you touch this flipper, it's gonna deploy, it's gonna deploy hard. Uh, this knife would likely get pegged crossing the border, but it doesn't meet the criteria of a prohibited weapon in Canada. And I'll put that on the screen here now and I'll read you sort of the, the key part of all of that. Let's see here. So a prohibited knife is, and I'll let me read this for you. <clears throat> A knife that has a blade that opens automatically by gravity or centrifugal force or by hand pressure applied to a button, spring, or other device in or attached to the handle of the knife. Okay, now then there's a provision here that says, or any weapon other than a firearm that is prescribed to be a prohibited weapon. Now. That's a whole nother discussion. We'll come, we'll get to that in a second because there are some, some knives that are prohibited in Canada. I'll throw that up on the screen. Actually, let me throw that up on the screen now. <clears throat> and you can see there's a bunch of stuff listed there. Essentially, their concern with prohibited knives are push daggers other than um, the Ulu and with concealed weapons like a, a cane sword or a belt sword or I mean a belt knife or, or anything that looks like something else but is actually a blade, okay? Uh, those are the main concerns under the prohibited weapon section. You can see that, you could pause and read all of that here now. All right, so here's why this is frustrating and problematic. So you can read in the Criminal Code of Canada that certain knives are prohibited, that's fine, okay? I, I still, you know, We'll get into a discussion about that in a second, but the, the problem, the primary problem that I have with this ruling is that it makes two sets of rules. There's one set of rules for knives that are legal in Canada, okay? And there are knives <clears throat> that uh, are, are not autos and can't be opened simply by gravity. Okay, they have a strong enough detent that they're not gonna open by gravity. And lots of knives, that, that leaves tons and tons of knives on the table, right? Virtually every knife that I've shown you on this video, uh, well, in fact, every knife that I've shown you in this video is completely legal in Canada, no issue. All right, however, what's frustrating is that every knife that I've shown you in this video could not cross the border into Canada. And so you have a situation where a legal item is prohibited from entry. And that is really, really frustrating. Okay, uh, and I guess what's even more frustrating is the fact that there's very little political will to change this. Okay, knives don't have a great reputation in the general public. And so when you say, you know, they're, they're gonna make more knives illegal in Canada to your friend or neighbor or family member, they're gonna go, oh, good. Okay, and, and if you're a knife guy, you know, that's kind of baloney, all right? And let me, for just a second, speak to why that is kind of stupid, all right? Now, I have here a Kershaw knockout. I'm trying to move this other stuff out of the way. Uh, but I've got here a Kershaw knockout. Uh, this is a knife that is, was one of the first ones that were sort of targeted by CBSA. It's still totally legal in Canada. There's nothing wrong with carrying this knife, uh, but <clears throat> it's assisted with a flipper. So I push the flipper tab down and a spring takes over and, and deploys the knife. Again, this doesn't meet the definition of prohibited weapon. However, CBSA would definitely not want me to have this. Although I did order it from the US and it came across the border with no problems because it wasn't inspected. Uh, or if it was, they didn't take the knife out and fully try to use it. But this is a pretty quickly deploying knife, okay? It deploys pretty fast and pretty hard. Uh, some people might even consider it, you know, if, you, if a friend saw this who didn't know anything about knives, they may be like, man, is that a switchblade? And of course, no, it's not. Uh, but let's pretend it was a switchblade. Let's pretend this was the Kershaw, um, one of the Kershaw autos and this button, I just pushed it and bam, the blade was out. All right, so let's, let's do a little pretend thing. So I take this knife out of my pocket, I push the button, the blade comes out. All right, well, guess what? It doesn't matter how quickly that blade deploys or how simple it is to deploy, it's not as fast as this knife. <laughs> Okay, because the second I lay my hands on this knife, the knife, the blade is out. Okay, it's insane to try to suggest that somehow the, the speed with which a knife can be deployed makes it more dangerous. That is absolute ins foolishness. Uh, because it doesn't matter, any knife that closes in any way cannot 
be as fast as a fixed blade, which is totally legal, and everybody's kitchen is filled with them. Okay, in fact, every indication is that the knives that are used in murders, and there are some, okay, uh, let's, let's talk about this just for a second. So in Canada, we have 36.29 million people, okay, pretty small number uh, when it comes to the population of a whole country, but of that 36.29 million people, 611 were killed in 2016 by, you know, in a way that was classified as a homicide. Okay, 600 people out of 36 million. All right, so that tells you right away, we do not have a big crime problem in Canada. We're extremely safe. You are less, you have less chance, right, than two in a million of being murdered in any way in Canada. So this is a very safe country to live in. All right, now if we kind of do, go take that to the next level, 175 of those 611, okay, 175 of those 611 were killed with a knife. All right, now guess what? When you look at those numbers closely, none of them were killed with a Kershaw knockout. Okay, none of them were killed with a spider co at all. Okay, the, the people that get killed with a knife, they're killed with, uh, generally speaking, they're killed with a kitchen knife because it's an act of rage where someone, you know, uh, has, has been accosted in their home or someone gets into this violent disagreement, runs in the house, finds the first weapon they can, which is a kitchen knife, and goes and uses it on someone. So making laws that limit all kinds of, any kind of folding pocket EDC type of knife have no impact on actual knife crime. And what's more, <laughs> there's only 175 of these a year. Okay, we do not have a problem with knife crime in Canada at all. Okay, not at all. The other thing to point out here is that when you start taking steps to, well, you know, maybe we could get that down to 150 or 100. We could, you know, we could save 75 lives by, by restricting knives in Canada. The truth is, no, you couldn't, okay? Because that person who gets in a blind rage and runs into the house to find the first weapon they can, if they don't see a knife, they're gonna see a crowbar or a hammer or a rope or a rock. Okay, it doesn't matter that you, they don't have a knife easily available. That makes no difference whatsoever. And in countries where they've ha passed all kinds of strict laws about uh, knives or guns or anything else, okay, the total number of murders doesn't go away, okay? You haven't saved any lives at all, right? All you've done is changed the statistics about which weapon they use because they're gonna use the most accessible one. The other thing is, if we use guns for a brief example, in places where gun laws are extremely strict, you just make it so that only the criminals have them. All right, criminals by nature do not obey the law. That's why they're criminals and so, you passing a law that says, hey, we're gonna, that, that restricts the accessibility of guns to the general population has no impact on the number of guns that criminals are able to get. They weren't buying them legally in the first place. All right, the one place where we do have a bit of an issue with gun crime, and it's a, right, uh, it's a really, really small issue, okay? Toronto does have some gun crime that takes place. Now, if you look at the numbers, Toronto in a year has less gun crime than most US cities have in a day, okay? But even if we consider those uh, problems, the gun crime in Toronto is criminal gangs using illegal weapons against one another. They're not using a gun that they went to Canadian Tire or Elwood Epps or some other, you know, gun retailer in Canada and bought legally. They're not. And so changing gun laws has no impact on the, the kind of gun crime that is a problem, that is, a, that is barely a problem, but that you may be concerned about in Canada. And it's the same around the world. Okay, so we now have this horrible interpretation from 
bureaucrats who are essentially making legislation. Now, you know, you try to import, you know, well, let's leave the para two here. You try to import your, your para two, okay? And CBSA says that this is a prohibited weapon. Well, the reality is there's a definition of prohibited weapon and they're not using it and that's not right, okay? So what can you do? Well, I, for one, have already called my MP. I've called him a number of times about this, in fact, and I'm going to call him again and I'm going to give him the reference number and I'll probably even email his office with a link to the CITT decision, okay, that uh, has further restricted the import of knives into Canada. All right, uh, now, it has yet to be seen how this is going to be applied. I don't have any knives that would meet this description coming into the country right now, uh, but I do fairly regularly have them coming into the country and I have not had too many problems, okay? <clears throat> I think there are some things you can do. Um, one of the things that kind of sets off CBSA is a high price tag because they want to collect taxes on that. So if, uh, you know, if you're buying an item, especially if you're buying it used, you didn't pay full price anyway. So make sure you write the lowest price possible. Same with trades. If you trade a knife, no money actually changed hands. All right. Now I have the advantage of many of the knives that are coming to me are coming for review. So people can put, hey, this is sent for review. Um, the other thing is, how do you describe it? Uh, I try to avoid, like if you buy a knife from Knives Ship Free, for example, uh, great place, by the way, I love Knives Ship Free, but I'll generally ask them, please don't ship it in a box that has Knives Ship Free or Knife Center or Blade HQ plastered all over the box, uh, because yeah, that's gonna set off some, some red flags for CBSA. <clears throat> Uh, and and some would even suggest, and you may have issues getting a knife in from China or from other parts of the world where they have issues with drugs, okay? So that could be something to consider as well. Um, but yeah, describe it as a folding pocket tool, describe it as a collectible, describe it as something other than a knife. That may be of benefit to you as well. Uh, the main thing that I would like to say here is uh, I think it's appropriate for us at this point to take some political action to try to at least call our member of, of federal parliament, so your MP, and say, look, this decision was made. It's a crap decision. It has the CBSA deciding things that they have no right to decide that are already written into federal law in the criminal code. And, uh, you know, voice your concerns along those lines. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. I know this got a little long, but I hope you stick with me till the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, I'd love to hear your comments down below. We'll talk to you soon.